All right, it's time to get back into business mode. Today I've got a bunch of stuff that I need to get sent off to Amazon. I've been slowly sending products over to Amazon over the last few months of the summer, but nothing like I was doing back in January, even December and November when I kind of screwed myself and didn't have any stock in Amazon. So. I promised myself this year coming into the holiday season that I wasn't gonna do that again. And well, if I don't send some products soon, I'm gonna do that exact same thing again. Dumbbells have been picking back up pretty regularly on Amazon, at least a few orders per day, which means that my stock amount is depleting faster than I'm able to keep up with it at this point anyway. Not that I can't print more stuff out and keep up with it, I just wasn't gonna send more to Amazon than what was selling. And during the few months of summer, uh, nothing was really going on over there. I was able to keep up by sending an order over once a month, if that. But it seems like now I'm gonna have to start sending either larger orders or more orders per month to keep up with what's selling over there. So that's what's on the books for today. Over the past few days, uh, after I got back from vacation, I've been doing a whole lot of nothing except for assembling dumbbells and trying to get this place back into business mode. So you might be able to tell none of the printers, at least on this side of the shop, are running. I've got them shut off over there for the purpose of this video. But working on some new things this year to try and streamline some of the production that comes with 3D printing. I've got the farm loop system installed on the P1P and one of my A1 Minis. I haven't tested the A1 Mini version out yet at the time of this video, but as I start to build up a little bit of a backlog of content again, we'll slowly start seeing that system being integrated because from what I've been able to see, at least on the P1P version, it's gonna be a a huge game changer for me, not having to unload the, the printers when they're done printing stuff. The system just kind of does it for me. All I have to really remember to do is make sure there's a bucket underneath and make sure that there's filament to be fed into the machine. So I will have to go through some of the filament that we've got in stock because I know I'm running low on a couple of the colors that I normally use, gray being one of them, white being another. And I do want to kind of just get things a little bit more ready to go into the holiday season. It is the end of August at the time of this video. Not exactly sure when you'll see it, probably first or second week of September if everything goes to plan. But as I go into, I guess really September is when I wanna hunker down and really get things sent over to Amazon. Uh, I've got plenty of sander mounts and stuff like that over there now, but there's no telling how the holiday season will go. So it doesn't hurt to have some extra ones in stock here. I'm running fairly low on the Festool and the Makita ones. So I do wanna get some more filament ordered for that, but that's not what this video is about. The other day I ran out of my bubble bags that I use to pack everything up, whether it's for an Etsy order, my website or Amazon. And it's more crucial for Amazon because when I send these out to Amazon, I'm sending them in bulk shipments. So I'm usually sending 50, 100, sometimes 100 plus items at a time, which means I need to have a fair amount of packing materials on hand. Otherwise, uh, obviously I can't send stuff. So I usually buy stuff from Amazon and I guess I'll start this by saying this video is not sponsored by The Boxery. This is just a company that I found online. Actually, uh, my buddy Zero over at Zero.Command uh, recommended them to me, I believe. But Amazon usually has fairly good prices if you're ordering 15, 20, 50 bags at a time. But I think I got this whole box. It's 200 bubble bags for $52. And I know what I was ordering on Amazon was either 50 or 100 bags for $32. I want to say it was 100 for 32. So this is definitely cheaper if I order it this way. And the more of these that you order, if you go up to 500, I believe it's somewhere around $90. So a huge savings when you order in bulk. In fact, the more you order, the more you save. I only went with 200 for this one because that'll get me through what I need to send to Amazon and then allow me to have a little bit of a backlog in stock for some of the stuff that I send out to Etsy. But essentially these are just the seven by eight and a half uh, bubble bags that I normally put all of my products in or at least 90% of my products in. And uh, I ordered on Tuesday, it's Friday right now and well, it's here, it's ready to go. So not a whole lot longer than it would take for a shipment from Amazon to come in, which is a big plus, especially this time of the year. When you're running a business, it's good to have multiple places that you can go to get your supplies from, whether it be filament or shipping supplies, printers. I know last year when I was ordering directly off of Amazon for all of my shipping materials, there were times that either the price got jacked up, I think the bubble bags actually went up 10 or $15 for the pack of 100 that I actually have linked in the description below. Not that it's at a bad price now, but when I was able to find supplies through the boxery and 
They're actually the same ones like the black bubble mailers that I normally use to send stuff out in. They've got those over there too. They've got them in multiple colors. Again, greater discounts for the more items that you order. So I think I've rambled on long enough in this intro of the video. If you're still here, welcome back. It is, uh, it's been a while since we did one of these print farm day in the life uh, in the business video type things I'm rambling. Essentially, they're just these little seven and a quarter by eight and a half bags. Yeah, there's just a giant package, a giant container full of these bubble bags that I use to send my things out in. So that is really just my plan for today is to get the rest of the dumbbells. I wanna send at least 60 of them. Amazon wants 57. Might as well send a little bit more. I don't know exactly how many I have made up in the box, but I have had this big box sitting here for a little while now since I haven't been assembling and sending a whole bunch of dumbbells into Amazon. So not a whole lot of printing going on today, but I imagine after we get stuff sent out, there will be quite a bit of printing that needs to commence with the dumbbells. And hopefully the farm loop system on the A1 Mini and the P1P should help me out for this, but we shall see. One other thing that I'd be interested to, I guess, find out is what are you interested in seeing as far as the 3D printing side of things goes, 3D print farm thing rather, because these videos, I could sit here and pack this stuff up for myself. It would, you know, be fairly straightforward and simple. Not that this adds a whole lot of time to what I'm doing, but what is it you wanna see in the videos? Do you just wanna see me doing whatever it is that I'm doing in the print farm during my days here in the farm? Or do you wanna see random print videos like I've been putting out over the last couple of months. If you just don't care, let me know that too, because that'll kind of help me gauge what uh, what I'm doing here in the print farm on camera anyway. So there really isn't a whole lot that goes into packing these things up. As you can imagine, it's a pretty straightforward process. I pull a dumbbell out, put it into one of the bubble mailer bags. It gets one of these uh, warning labels, risk of suffocation labels for the bubble mailer bags because Amazon really appreciates that. And then it gets the Amazon Azen barcode label applied onto each of the bags as well. When it's all said and done, I'll count how many I put into each box if I have more than one box. If not, then I'll just count how many I'm putting into the box and fill out all that information on the Amazon backend. If you're not familiar with the whole Amazon process, packing things up, getting your first orders sent over, getting any orders sent over for that matter, I do have a full video on the channel called Amazon FBA for 3D printing. And I'll be sure to link that down in the description below as well as uh, at the end of the video up in the top right or left hand corner. It'll be there in one of those corners towards the very end if you do want to go watch that after you watch this one. Essentially what that video goes through is start to finish from setting up an individual store or business side store from Amazon and getting your first set of items added as well as shipping those items out to Amazon. I cover everything from start to finish. I think the only thing I might not cover in that video is actually signing up for Amazon FBA because I had already done it at the time that I created the video. It's a pretty straightforward process. Amazon will actually prompt you through it after you register for an Amazon Seller Central account. Uh, and you can just enroll in FBA, go through their forms in order to sign yourself up for that. And then you'd be on your way to sending your first set of products into Amazon. It's pretty, uh, pretty lucrative deal when you can send stuff in bulk shipments and keep up with it from time to time, making sure you're not running out of stock or anything like that, making sure you're not getting too many defects because Amazon's not too fond of that. But yeah, go check out Amazon FBA for 3D printing if you're interested in getting your 3D print farm set up on Amazon. So I do like to keep my shipping station, shipping stuff kind of all in one area while I'm doing the packing. I'll usually have a podcast or a YouTube video up just to keep me company, but I do like to kind of get everything ready. So I'll pull a batch of bags out, get them set up, have my box of finished product, in this case, the dumbbells. And before you ask what they're for, they're business card holders. So they hold a set of business cards or gift cards to put in your gym or a physical therapist's office. I like to make sure my labels are, you know, pretty close by. Usually what I'll do is pack five, 10, 15 of them up and then apply the labels to them, put them in the box and continue on with the next batch or count of product. Which also means I've got a box down here with some of the ones that I started before I realized I ran out of bubble bags the other day. So I know I have 19 in there right now. I'm gonna fill that box as much as I can and then we'll start in on a second box. I think I should be able to fit everything into two of this size box, hopefully. If not, I'll find a bigger box, throw everything in there and call it a day.
All right, 32 items in box one, 31 items in box two. I don't see a bigger box around here aside from the boxery box that all of my shipping supplies just came in. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna send these ones out with two boxes. We'll send a total of 63 items, if my math is mathing correctly. And that should be good enough to hold us over at least until I can get some more assembled. Well, you can see how many I have left to assemble. I am gonna need more dumbbell rods. I am gonna need more dumbbell ends because the stuff that I've got in there right now is maybe enough for another 30 or 40 dumbbells. And that's not gonna cut it for the holiday season. So that means in the next video, we're gonna be probably setting up the other A1 Mini single color printer at least with Farm Loop, assuming that this system works. It should work just fine for the dumbbells now that I'm thinking about it because the way that the dumbbells are shaped, they've got this lip on the end, this chamfered end that makes it super easy for the A1 Mini to actually lift up and eject these parts. So I'm not too worried about that. I can probably get that going in the next video as well. Like I mentioned though, if you wanna see the full process of sending items to Amazon, I'm not gonna cover that in this video because it's really just slapping a label on that Amazon provides in the Amazon Seller Central backend. So it's a pretty straightforward, simple process. Essentially what I'll do just for a quick wrap up is I will take a measurement of each of the boxes, tell Amazon how many items are in each box. And then Amazon provides a FBA label as well as the UPS shipping label, which I have to pay for. It comes out of my Amazon account balance at one point or another, but that'll get applied to each of the boxes. I'll drop them off at Staples, which is a local UPS drop-off point. And then it usually takes about two weeks for Amazon to receive the items in. Last time it was right around that two week mark. So I'm hoping because I'm running a little bit short on product right now. I'm hoping it's going to be a bit quicker than two weeks, but we are coming towards that holiday season. So I could have, I could be screwing myself again, but I, I definitely want to have enough product in there. I think I started Amazon about this time last year, actually, and I sent 20 of each item in and quickly realized that I was going to need more. So trying to stay ahead of the game, at least get a, a fair amount of items sent over to the Amazon warehouses so they can get distributed across the country. And hopefully I won't fall behind like I did in uh, uh, the last holiday season because I know November was basically nothing in stock. December, towards the end of December, I had things in stock, but at that point, you're not really buying stuff for the holiday season. Not that I, you know, I don't know how these are going to fare this holiday season either. Etsy's slowed down dramatically, so Amazon seems to be for me where things are picking back up a little bit with not only the dumbbells, but some of the other products like the sander mounts that I have in stock there. I am getting behind. Uh, I took about a month off, uh, half of July, half of August I took off and went on vacation. If you, again, haven't seen those videos, they're on the Logan and Bobo channel. Uh, linked in the description below. I'm not gonna keep pushing that, but for those of you who are interested in seeing what I've been doing when I'm not in here, it is over on the Logan and Bobo channel. So this month of, well, the end, we're pretty much at the end of August here, probably already past uh, the end of August by the time you're seeing this, but September is really gonna be that month to get things packed up, shipped out, get new items added to Etsy and Amazon, really try to get things going a little bit more in the groove for this upcoming holiday season. Cause as many of you know, or maybe you don't, uh, if you're selling things or you wanna be selling things for the Christmas season, don't start listing them in November because it's too late. So you definitely wanna to try to at least get on three months prior, three or four months prior to give people the opportunity to find your stuff, give the algorithm on both of those platforms time to find your stuff versus trying to get it on there in you know, middle of November, end of November, where most people are already done with Christmas shopping. I guess the perks of having things on Amazon is you do get that prime shipping, but it does slow down dramatically during the holiday season. So what would normally be one to two day prime shipping turns into like a week prime shipping, if not a little bit more. So you still have to plan accordingly with that. So that's that's gonna be my plan going forward. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning, I wanna know what you're interested in seeing because I could do five videos. I could do a video every day of me packing stuff up or getting things prepared to go to Amazon. But as some of you pointed out in some of the last print farm videos that I did, it was getting pretty repetitive, just showing me packing things up for Etsy you know, two or three orders at a time. You know, that's what I was doing. That's what was going on at that time in the print farm. So figured if you guys wanted a print farm video, that's what you're gonna get. Uh, I do know that uh, there was a lot of people who were still interested in seeing that print farm stuff. So if you don't mind and you wanna continue to see me pack a couple orders a day or pack up orders as they come in, Etsy again has slowed down pretty significantly 
over the course of the summer. Hopefully that'll pick back up towards uh, the next coming months. But yeah, let me know what you wanna see in the comments section down below. I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Oh, what do y'all think about the new Bamboo H2S? I haven't seen it yet because it's currently the 23rd of August at the time I'm recording this video. Uh, but they did put out an announcement the other day that the H2S is coming out or being announced anyway on August 26th. But you've obviously seen what that printer is. Is it something you're going to pick up? Is it something you think I should get here into the print farm? It, it definitely looks intriguing from this, the few leaks and the pictures that I've seen of it. So curious to get your thoughts on that as well as some of the other things that I rambled on about today. All right, I'm gonna get up from this chair, get these labels applied to the boxes, and then I've got a little bit more work to do before I uh, head in for the night, so. You folks take care. You have a wonderful morning, noon, night, whenever it is you're watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.